Good afternoon, everybody. I appreciate everybody showing up. Uh, by now, you guys are aware, uh, yesterday afternoon, I made a decision uh, after through a co consultation with uh, Dr. Hebert and, and members of our athletic foundation, uh, met with Tyson Summers, and we made a decision to make a change in our head football coach. Um, Tyson and his family have been a big part of this institution for the time that they've been here, and I can't thank them enough for the things that they've done for our program. Uh, our program, with a lot of things that the public doesn't see, is in a very good position right now, and that's due to the efforts of Tyson Summers and his staff. We had a pretty, pretty personal conversation. And uh, at that point, I decided, you know, to let him know that we were going to make a decision and make a change in our in our coaching coaching position. I will tell you that Tyson handled that is is probably as professional as uh, anybody that I've ever seen. And um, with that, uh, we are moving forward with a national search to find a head football coach uh, to lead us uh, in, on our continued journey of FBS football. Questions. Tom, uh, with Tyson, you hired a guy, a great guy, a nice guy that really wanted to be here. I'm, I believe you guys felt like he was going to stay here for a while if he was successful. At this point, do you have to come to grips with the fact that this might be a two and done kind of a, a, a job, a stepping stone job, and just go find the best coach that you think is out there? Well, I, it's kind of a two-part question. I'll, I'll, I'll start off with the, we are going to find the best coach for Georgia Southern uh, and, and the best coach to lead us forward. Uh, I think we are an institution no different than any institution that's at this level, that people will come here and be successful, and we will continue to battle to keep successful people here. Um, but uh, but I'm, I'm confident that our institution and the resources that we have here will attract people to this job, and I'm confident that this community – uh, will attract successful people, and, and the resources we have will allow successful people to stay here as long as they desire. So I'm not, I'm not ready to sit here and say this is a two and done or one and done or three and done type school. I am ready to say that this is a pretty good job, and I know a lot of people are going to be interested in it, and we've got a lot of resources to keep successful people here. Mr. Kleinlein, why, why this decision? Why, why do it now? Why not wait till the end of the season, or why was this the right time to make this Change. Yeah, it's, 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 there's a lot of, lot of moving pieces associated with that. I, I would start with first, you know, one of the things we have is the new NCAA recruiting rules. Uh, December 20th becomes a very big day in our signing period. Um, this gives us an opportunity to really uh, take some time and, and do a search and get somebody in here, hopefully, hopefully, in time to really attack that first recruiting period. Um, however, I will say that I don't want to box myself in with that time frame. Uh, I'm going to go find the best coach possible for our job, and however long that takes is what it's going to be. Uh, I also say that, uh, you know, looking at our team and looking at the effort and the things that we were doing on the field, I, I felt like we were making progress uh, in a lot of areas, but we just needed to kind of move a little bit faster. And I felt it needed to be a little bit of a change in, in our leadership. And um, I didn't see, uh, I didn't see. Uh, a reason to prolong that. With Coach Lunsford's background here, um, is he going to have an opportunity to keep this job long term should the on-field performance turn around drastically for the rest of the season? Well, I'll, I'll preface that by saying, or I'll, I'll answer it this way. Um, when I had my conversation with Chad about announcing him as interim head coach, I can tell you that he was like a kid on Christmas. I think that guy has more passion for Georgia Southern than, than a lot of people that have, that have gone to school here. He bleeds, bleeds blue. Uh, I think that when you look at what he's got in front of him, he's got six game opportunity. Uh, we discussed it as a, uh, a resume, so to speak. You know, he's going to get to go out there and perform and get everybody to show, see what he can do and what he can do with this team. And I think uh, if, if he goes out and he does some things very well and, and performs to – certain levels, he's certainly going to have an opportunity to be in consideration for this job. Tom, in the, going forward, uh, is the route going to be anything different than it's been in the past? You went and kind of maybe with the uh, going after a coordinator or someone who's not been on quarter for a long time, 
route you went with Willie Fritz with somebody who had been a head coach for a while. Do you go back to that head coach for a while route, or do you open it up to anyone? I think what you got to do is you got to sit down and, and, and look at your pool and, and determine what's the best fit for our institution right now and who, who is going to give us the best chance to move our program forward. I don't want to limit us to head coach. I don't want to limit us to coordinator. I don't want to limit us to offensive guy, defensive guy. Right now, uh, you know, back to your question, one of the things is that we're a job that's out there that a lot of people got to pay attention to our announcement yesterday, so there's a lot of people interested in our job. And so what I uh, have the opportunity now with our time frame is to kind of pare that down and really, really spend a lot of time developing who it is we want to go after and why. But I do not want to limit us in any way to a particular uh, model. I, hope that I think that answered your question. TK, I'm just going to follow that up. Uh, now that we're in season here, is that harder of a job to go out and find a guy? Or you started touching on it there. I mean, you got some guys I know that or a lot of your, your, your client, your potential replacements could be in season right now. Talk about the process moving forward about searching for a head coach. Yeah, when you do an in-season search, it's a little different. Obviously, you got guys that are working every day, and it's a lot harder to spend some time to get, get to visit them. You got to kind of work on their schedule, and their schedule kind of dictates when you can meet with them. Um, that's one of the negatives. One of the positives is that you actually kind of get to watch them work. You actually get to see them perform live and in front of you. So that's a that's a, a good good opportunity as well as for this search. Um, we will we will work diligently, and we will we will overturn everything that we need to overturn to find the best guy for this job. It does present a little more of a challenge during the season, but the the time frame and the ability to try to attack that first recruiting weekend outweigh the challenges that an in-season search might have. Um, on a similar note to that, uh, you've made a couple of coaching hires here. One in Coach Fritz brought along a lot of us former staff he had worked with, whereas Tyson you know, may have worked with some of those guys before, but they hadn't worked together. Is that something you give consideration to? Obviously, finding the head coaches the main thing, but is there consideration given to finding someone who can maybe bring an entire staff with them? Yeah, I think anytime you do a coach's, a coach's search, one of the questions you always ask either an existing head coach or somebody that's never been a head coach before is what is your staff going to look like? How is that going to fit? How confident are you that these guys are going to join you uh, at the next institution you go to? So that is a key part of the process. Um, that is something that will be you know, asked of a number of all the candidates of you know what what is your process for hiring staff How, you know are you going to bring these guys do you think any of these guys will be left behind those are all things that that'll go into the process and questions that are asked but staff continuity is is a big thing that's a big thing in success i've been a part of staffs that have made changes before and you know you go through challenges when you don't have continuity when you're when you're hiring a bunch of people that come from different places but I've also been part of staffs where entire staffs have moved all at once and they seem to hit the ground a little bit quicker. So there is definitely an advantage to hiring somebody that can bring a staff that's already worked together, that knows how to communicate and, and hit the ground running, especially with that early recruiting weekend. Uh, as interim head coach, is, his, is this his program to run now? Does he have any constraints on him? Well, you can ask him that when he comes up here. But I You're the AD, though. I want to know that Absolutely. I'll, I'll tell you exactly what I told him, and he'll confirm it. I'm pretty sure I, when I asked him to be the interim head coach, I said, you are the head football coach. Your decisions are what you need to make moving forward, whatever that may be. And I think he's got some things that he's already uh, had to make some maneuvers on. One, obviously, he's had to figure out who's going to replace him and our coaching staff. So he's making those decisions uh, no different than any, any head coach that was in this program before that I've worked with. Uh, we will talk daily or we will talk as needed. And really, I don't expect my relationship with the head football coach to change any bit. It's the same as it's been for Tyson or Willie or anybody else that I work with, Jeff Munkin, whoever. Uh, just want to make sure I understand. So um, it would seem like a, you know, and I could, a candidate who's a coordinator at another school right now could pick up and leave right away. But if your candidate's a head coach, uh, the school that they're at might not let you, uh, might not let him start his job until the season's over with. So, um, am I right about that, or is that is that a factor? So, I think what you're asking me is, a coordinator at another school could leave that school right now and come here and be our head coach. 
I, I don't know that I would feel comfortable with that position right now. Uh, I think our kids have gone through a lot of change already, and I'm confident that that gentleman right there can lead our program the next six games in a way that's representative of Georgia Southern. Uh, whether that's good enough to remain long term, that will we'll de we'll determine that. But I don't think bringing somebody from a coordinator's position in here with six games left is, is a very good decision. I, I wouldn't. I would not do that. Uh, and one other question: Do you expect that uh, you would go with a four-year contract for for the upcoming coach? Yeah, I think you know all of that right now is too early in the process. I think one of the things you have to sit down when you go through a coach's search is you have to look at the reality of what he's walking into. What does that mean at the end of the season? We don't know that yet. Uh, what does recruiting look like at the end of the season? We don't know that yet. So all those things are determining factors when you try to go out and recruit a coach and, and, and figure out the, his length of tenure. Uh, I will tell you this, again, like I said earlier, uh, I, I feel very comfortable that the next head coach is going to be walking into a program that's, that's a lot more stable than it was two years ago. TK, how um, this question popped up on Twitter last night, so I'm sure you've already well, had it. It's got to be an important one. Asked to you, yes. Uh, how, uh, how married or not are you to the idea of bringing in a coach with a triple option background? I am, I am married to bringing a coach here who's going to get us back on the path of winning and whatever that takes. Uh, clearly, clearly, our culture at Georgia Southern is what it is. But uh, at the end of the day, our young men, our fans, everybody that's Eagle Nation deserve somebody that's going to lead this program in a way that's going to allow it to be successful on the field. And that's, that's what I'm married to. I know you said you're not going to push – too soon to have a coach, but with the new NCAA recruiting guidelines that you mentioned, do you have an ideal time for when you want to have a, a decision made on the next head coach? I think, you know, if I, all the stars aligned and things went the right way, ideally we'd like to have somebody in here after that last game and be ready to hit the ground running for recruiting. But what I'm not going to do is not going to get caught in a situation where there's a good candidate out there or a candidate that I feel is, is a quality candidate and I'm going to get boxed in by that time frame. Uh, so I, I think our search process will allow that, you know, that will dictate kind of our timeline as we go through it. Tom, how hamstrung, or ha hamstrung are you with Tyson's contract and how, how much are you going to be able to not – asking you for a dollar figure, but do you feel comfortable that the next coach will be able to make as much as Tyson or more? I feel the next coach, well, and I don't feel I know through my conversations with our president and uh, conversations with our athletic board, we're going to be able to offer a very competitive salary in our league that will be equal to what Tyson made or more. So I don't, I don't feel like we're going to be taking a step back at all when it comes to the financial uh, side of our football coach. Well, um, yesterday afternoon uh, when I sat down and had a conversation with this next gentleman, I was, I, I was actually taken back by the, the level of enthusiasm and the, the, the level of excitement that came across his face. Uh, I, I've had the pleasure of working with him since I've come here, and we've gone through some transition together. And uh, I feel very confident in his abilities to lead our football team. Uh, you know, one of the unique things about Chad is, you know, he, he's, he's been here numerous times. Uh, he, he loves this place. He, he coaches special teams, so that kind of gives him an advantage. He's touched players on both sides of the ball for our team. And I think he's uh, going to be a tremendous leader over the next six games. And, and without further ado, I'd like to introduce our interim head coach, Chad Lunsford. Let's give him a round of applause. Thank you, Brian. Uh, first off, just want to say, man, what an opportunity. Uh, blessed uh, by – unbelievably blessed. You know, Georgia Southern is a very special place to me. Um, had the opportunity to be here for a long time and uh, very excited 
that I get a chance to lead the Georgia Southern Eagles. Uh, first off, I want to thank TK for the opportunity, uh, the administration. Um, I want to thank, obviously, my wife and kids for putting up with me in this business and uh, the, the, the craziness that comes with it. Uh, but very fired up that I'm going to have the opportunity to lead. Coach, have you sat down with all the other coaches and kind of brainstormed or, or talked to them uh, about what your philosophy may be? And in particular, on the offensive side with Brian Cook, have you guys gotten together to see if there's anything that maybe salvage the offense with the situation you're in right now? I took the opportunity yesterday. You know, it, it's been a, a whirlwind, obviously, but um, – Took the opportunity to sit down with both Coach Cook and Coach Zoe, and uh, we discussed some things, and you know, just things that I think that I can help with that I think um, has made this place successful. Uh, we've talked through that, and uh, I, I know that they know which way I want to head with it. Coach, you just mentioned. Uh, sorry, Mike Anthony, Sagebro Herald, by the way. Um, you mentioned that you talked about things uh, that you think have made this place successful. You're the longest tenured coach here. You've uh, been a big part of recruiting the players, coaching some of the older ones before the current coaching staff got here. Uh, how important do you think that is for a team in a season that's kind of rocky and has hit a, a bunch of bumps in the road? I think it's very important. Um, you know, why I am so fired up about this opportunity is, you know, Obviously, this season has not gone the way we want it to go, but the reason why I'm fired up about it is because um, I know these guys, and I, and I know what they put into it every day. And, you know, for since 2013, the, these guys, you know, are seniors that were here and uh, that, are, that are leading our team now. You know, I know how much it means to them, and I know how much they want to be successful. And, you know, it, it's one of those deals where I know, just like TK alluded to a while ago, uh, you know, somebody's going to walk into a great job. And and I think this job is great right now. And I think these kids can, can turn the season around and do a great job. Hey, Coach, Nathan Dean, Savannah Morning News. Um, what's the attitude and morale of the team right now? I think the morale is good. You know, obviously they're a little bit confused. They um, – Obviously, we become so close. You know, our, our team is a tight. We, we use the word brotherhood all the time. And, it, and obviously, they get close. They get close to their coaches. They get close to their brothers. They get, you know, they get close to the head coach. So, you know, when business decisions have to be made and changes have to be made, there's a lot of confusion with them. Um, I do think that they're in a good place. Um, I think they understand the expectations at Georgia Southern, and they understand when those expectations don't get met that things happen. Um, but I think they're in a good place. Coach, talk about it. You've been through this several times now, coaching staffs coming and going. Uh, how have you been able to, to keep it going through all this, uh, in addition to the players? You've been kind of the glue that's gone from, from staff to staff. That's really easy. This place is easy to sell, you know, and uh, – I raised my kids here, you know, I, I live here in Statesboro, and, you know, this is a place I want to be. And uh, and when I actually feel that way, it's very easy to sell that to kids. And when we recruit them, I'm telling them the truth. And uh, they come here and they experience it. And, uh, you know, it's been a successful place. Um, our, our guys come in expecting to win championships to, uh, and, and to win ball games. And uh, there's no reason why they shouldn't come here and believe that. Coach, you mentioned that you have your philosophies and you shared those with both Coach Zoe and Coach Cook. Uh, on the offensive side of the ball, is your philosophy any different than what was going on? And now that Shy might, may or may not be back or whatever the case may be, do you feel like that this is a chance to, to do something really different or are we going to continue the path that they're going on right now? Well, I think I think as you watch, um, you know, obviously the the numbers and the statistics, uh, they they're, they're starting to get better. Uh, obviously, the win column has not. Um, I, I don't know, you, you know, if it's if it's fair to say let's make an overhaul overhaul change, you know, to these kids. You know, we we've got we, we've got plenty of time and 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 where we've invested into what we're doing. Um, I do think we're close. On offense, I think that um, 
we're going down the right path. Um, obviously, we've got to run the ball effectively and, and be more efficient in the pass game. But, you know, as far as this thing goes, I have full faith in Coach Cook and what we're going to do on offense. And, uh, and, and he's expressed to me the things that he thinks will help. And uh, I think we are definitely going to be going in the right direction with him. Hey, Coach. I'm Thomas Jilk with the George Ann. Um, I'm wondering a little more about your leadership style and your coaching philosophy. Could you tell us a little bit more about that and how it might be different or similar than, than Coach Summers was? You know, uh, my philosophy, I think it's, it's all about the, you know, trying to make sure that the team is unified. And um, we, like I said earlier, we talk about brotherhood around here and we talk about playing for one another and playing for each other and, and what your why is and why you do things. Um, but as far as it goes, you know, it, it's not rocket science when you play football. You know, if you can run the ball effectively, if you can secure the football and make sure you don't turn it over and uh, you can be disciplined in your penalties and, and, and things that, you know, beat yourselves. And you never want the Eagles to beat the Eagles. And um, I think that's something that we're going to put a lot of time into and stressing is making sure that the fundamentals are right, ball security is right, and our discipline's right. Hi, Coach. Greg Talbot, WSAV. Congratulations. Uh, you got a lot of people tonight uh, who are to be watching the news, listening to the radio, who are looking forward to hearing from you. Uh, what direct message do you have for students, alumni, donors about this next chapter of Eagle football? Show up, because we're going to show out. Coach Rex Castillo from WSAV, uh, one heck of a first test. You got Troy coming up this week, a team that already beat LSU. Just how, how do you like your chances going into this one? Obviously, we have a lot of respect for Troy. Um, Coach Brown has done a tremendous job there, um, and he, he's he's done a really good what, good job with the program. And you know, but that's the one thing about Georgia Southern, and, and that's the way we're going to go into this game is we're going to prepare to win, and we're going to expect to win. And uh, you know, none of that's going to change. We're going to go into this game knowing that we're going to be prepared and ready to roll. Coach, you said it three, four questions ago to this team and turn things around. What is it about their makeup or personal view of yours that, hey, we can do this this year? Because I have not seen any quit in them. Um, when you, and I've, you know, 0-6 is new to me. And, you know, when you when you sit there and you, you, you try to, all right, how do we motivate them? How do we get them going? I'm telling you, these guys, have that work ethic in them. They've got the want to in them, and they want to do it right. Lots of times when you watch our games, sometimes we just don't get out of our own way, and and that's what we got to work on. But I'm very confident if if we can learn to do that, we can go ahead and win these games. Uh, yeah, coach. A couple of questions. Um, going back to recruiting real quick. With your background in recruiting, do you see that as one of the main areas of the focus uh, for you right now? First and foremost, it's about our players in, in, in this building. Um, but obviously recruiting is the lifeblood of what we do, and we have to spend time at it. And uh, obviously we reached out to all our guys yesterday, our recruits, our commitments, and, um, you know, and made sure, you know, let them know, hey, no issues, everything's good to go, we're ready to roll. Uh, but obviously recruiting is a very important piece to what we do. And that's been expressed to our staff, you know, that this is what we do. We're going to take care of our players in-house, and we're going to recruit. And also, can you uh, give us an update on Shy Wirtz, and uh, if, could there possibly be a quarterback change going forward this season? You know, um, Shy, we're monitoring daily. Um, and obviously, I, I'm going to hold off on that a little bit just because, you know, the last – 12 hours or so, it's been a whirlwind, and we had not just been able to sit down and say this and that. But I, I expect Shy to be our quarterback, and, um, and and as long as he's healthy and ready to roll, that's what I expect it, be, it to be. Coach Jake Wallace with WTOC. It was mentioned earlier that the head coaching search and the permanent head coaching search. Do you look at these next six, seven games possibly as kind of a interview for you to maybe make your case for that job? Is this appropriate? Dang straight, I do. Dang straight. This is, you know, this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity at a school that I love, a school that I believe in, 
and I'm going to do the best job I can do to try to get it. Coach, uh, you just talked about recruiting a question or two ago. Um, w with the current situation and TK saying that, you know, one of the things he's really looking at is having a plan going into that early uh, signing period in December. Is there something when you reach out to those recruits that you need to tell them? Because, you know, obviously uh, uh, there are some challenges in recruiting to a team that's uh, struggled, and now some more challenges in recruiting to a team that's in coaching flux. Again, uh, I think it's really simple. I think it's about Georgia Southern, and I, I think it's about the tradition. I think it's about the history. I, I think it's about what this place has to offer. And you know, obviously, you're gonna you're gonna fight negative recruiting because of the season we've had so far. Um, but I think we do a good enough job selling this program and what it is and where it's going to get back to and uh, that these guys are going to buy into it. I, I don't worry about that. I think this place sells itself. We get them here, and, and as soon as they get here, uh, they're, they're awed. Coach Lunsford, um, Georgia Southern's never had somebody fired or relieved of their coaching duties midseason. I would imagine it's really tough for the assistant coaches at this point and their families not knowing what their futures are. Are you concerned at all about their focus? And, and if so, what do you do to them to try to make sure they're not worried about their next job and, and looking out there for something? You know, what I've learned in this business is everybody is professional and, and they understand. And, and, and that's what it was about yesterday when we met as a staff. It was about, you know, I get it. And, you know, I'm, I want to make sure that you feel comfortable. I want you to make sure that you feel comfortable with your family. But the feel that I got from the staff was, man, it's about these guys. It's about this team and what they deserve and how they deserve to end the season. And there's no doubt in my mind that all of them are bought into that.